What are we doing here today? Well, we are celebrating uh, new additions to our fleet. We have the first electric school bus in the region. It'll serve Sequoia High School. And we have the first in the country electric rural transit buses. This adds to our fleet of transit vehicles. It's gonna make a big impact on the environment. It's gonna help people get to and from work and school and all the other places that we serve. Uh, what a great way to kick off a great week, which will include Earth Day, of course. Um, why is it important to have transit for people in rural areas? Well, connecting people to services, connecting them to employment in particular is a way to actually keep rural communities whole. If we want to keep the rural communities that Cherokees founded uh, more than a century ago, if we want to keep them alive, in some cases we've got to get the people that live there two jobs so they can come back home, raise their family. So this is part of a larger strategy to build an economy that works for everybody and keeps these small towns uh, viable. Uh, and it's also a good way, again, to uh, affect the environment in a positive way. Uh, we made a goal years ago to reduce our carbon footprint. Certainly adding electric vehicles to our fleet is just one of the ways we're doing that. Did you have questions? Chief, you get these are uh, two, two of these buses. Right. You have one school bus, is that right? Or are that's, you going to get more? That's right. Well, we'll look at it. You know, we, we have to see how effective these are. I think it's good to uh, take kind of a deliberate approach when it comes to electric vehicles. They certainly are the future. This will be good to see how they work. We think they're, they will work well, uh, but this is part of a larger uh, array of things that we do. We're putting solar on community buildings. We're putting charging stations in across the reservation. This will be, I think, a big boost to our overall effort to reduce our carbon footprint. We've, we've been looking into uh, the electric vehicle infrastructure and electric vehicles for several years. A few years ago, we started this with the uh, uh, construction of our solar canopy out of the Cherokee Nation complex. Uh, when we initially uh, constructed that, we, we powered it only halfway because we didn't have hardly any demand. Uh, over the years, you know, just last few years, we've had so much more demand that we're repowering uh, the other half of it, and that's to accommodate growth of electric vehicles on both employees and uh, our fleet vehicles. And so, you know, th this is a multi-phase uh, approach and strategy that we have for investing in electric vehicle infrastructure and vehicles across the Cherokee Nation and the government. And this is, you know, a, a day to celebrate this important step, which is one of many to come. Sure. So what you're looking at two uh, electric transit buses. Uh, that were manufactured by Proterra. These, these buses have approximately 200 mile range before they have to be recharged. Uh, the recharge rate is about six hours uh, for these two buses. Uh, the electric school bus is about half the size since it doesn't need the long journeys like you would need with these rural transit buses. So it's, a, it's about a hundred mile uh, range and about three hours to charge. Part of what we've done uh, with this phase of our inf development is in establishing infrastructure and charging points um, in rural areas throughout the Cherokee Nation. So here uh, at this site here in Tahlequah, we have one uh, fast charger that uh, can charge this bus, you know, like I mentioned, in six hours. And then uh, we have another uh, charger established over in, in uh, Stillwell. and looking at another one for, to be installed in uh, West Salem Springs. And so the infrastructure kind of goes in hand in hand with actually the electric vehicles and electric buses. Um, and, and the range has really grown over the years as the technology has advanced. And uh, they can actually, uh, you, know, you can replace these fairly easy with typical and normal transit systems. Um, how, what's the lifespan on these buses, you know, and how much uh, um, gasoline or diesel emissions are we saving by using these? The lifespan of these vehicles are, you know, are in, in the same or in some cases exceed what you would have with uh, you know, a gas powered or diesel powered counterpart. Uh, these vehicles, you know, they have pretty much zero maintenance because there's no moving parts, uh, and, and the, util the, the cost savings you have uh, for, for charging these via uh, electric as opposed to gas power or diesel power is substantial over over the life of the uh, uh, life of the vehicle, and, and you know that works into the economics of why it makes sense to uh, install these or, or, or replace existing transit buses with these. You not only do you save money, but you also reduce your carbon footprint and carbon emissions throughout the life cycle of the vehicle.